we're going to start making some connections with other types of biological molecules, not just carbs, but other types like lipids and proteins. Um, so let's look at this overall sort of picture of what's going on here. We've just learned about the fact that glucose can be taken in by cells, gets phosphorylated, and then the cell can either store that glucose in the form of glycogen, or it can use that glucose in order to make some energy. It'll send it off into the citric acid cycle. Here's the interesting thing though, uh, glucose could alternatively be processed in order to form other substances. So we could use that glucose in order to form glycerol molecules, and then we could also grab some of this acetyl-CoA and build it up into the form of fatty acid chains. And we know about these two things together, a glycerol and three fatty acid chains. If we connect those, uh, then what we would end up with is a triglyceride. So this is actually a way that the cell can take glucose and convert it into fats, uh, so lipids. So really neat conversions can take place there. Why would the cell want to do that? Well, fat is another way to store energy. So this is something that would take place um, if the cell did not need ATP, like in the moment, but if it wanted to save some of this energy for reserves. Um, and specifically, this pathway, making lipids, this is something that gets initiated as ATP levels rise. So particularly after you've had a, a meal, um, right, that gives you energy, then ATP levels are gonna be kind of at a maximum, and that's going to trigger this event. Instead of acetyl-CoA going into the citric acid cycle, instead it will be sort of shipped over to, to help build triglycerides and other sorts of lipids. And there's a name for this. This is called lipogenesis. This is the formation of lipids. And this is a, an alternative way to store energy, and it's a very efficient way to store energy. If we just compare by mass, if we compare one gram of fat versus one gram of carbs, like um, glycogen, then what we see is that one gram of fat can store nine kilocalories of energy versus one gram of carbohydrates can store just four gram kilocalories of energy. So it's, uh, lipids provide a very efficient, very space efficient and weight efficient way to store energy for, for use down the road. So again, coming over here to acetyl-CoA, acetyl-CoA can either do the familiar thing, head off into the citric acid cycle and provide us with ATP by that route, um, or it can be sent off into these other pathways. It can be used as a building material. Remember, each acetyl-CoA molecule has two carbons. So if we connect up two carbons and two carbons and two carbons, what we're essentially doing is we're building up a fatty acid chain. So that's one possibility. Um, or it could alternatively be built into the form of cholesterol. We've seen that molecule before, good example of a steroid. Um, or we could form what are called ketone bodies. These we've mentioned in passing before in the context of um, ketosis. We'll come back to that in just a minute. So fatty acids as an energy source, just in terms of the cell storing energy this way, let's take a look at this pathway a little bit more from the other direction. So supposing that we're starting with a triglyceride, something that has fatty acid chains, and let's suppose that the cell is going to break that down and harvest the energy from it. Essentially what will happen, so we start with a fatty acid up here, uh, that fatty acid chain is going to go through a series of modifications, and essentially what happens is that it kind of gets snipped into pieces. Two carbons get trimmed off at a time, and each set of two carbons uh, will, will essentially become a molecule of acetyl-CoA. And then the acetyl-CoA is something that can enter the citric acid cycle. So the fatty acid chain gets trimmed down two carbons at a time. Um, so if we started, for example, with a fatty acid chain that had 16 carbons, that would allow us to generate eight acetyl-CoA molecules for the citric acid cycle if we were gonna actually harvest energy from this fatty acid. So that can end, us, and end up giving us lots of ATP. A lot of ATP is stored, um, or can be, rather, can be recovered from the stored fatty acids. All right, so that applies to what we would generally refer to as white fat. There's another type of fat that exists too, and you should be aware of it, brown fat. This is a different type of fat. This is particularly relevant in newborn babies. And brown fat, um, it, it involves a different type of cell designed for heat 
uh, production rather than ATP production. So what's going on in these cells that store brown fat is that um, when the fatty acid chains are, are broken down and, and sent off um, through the citric acid cycle and off to the electron transport chain, what happens is inside of the mitochondria, instead of things going just as we've learned about, instead there's actually a leaky membrane inside of the mitochondria. So that proton gradient that would ordinarily build up and power ATP synthase, instead of powering ATP synthase, uh, those protons can just kind of go back across the membrane, they can leak back across, and that actually generates heat. So brown fat is essentially for heat production, it's for thermogenesis in newborns. This helps to keep newborns warm helps them to not get cold too fast. They have tiny bodies, so it's harder for their bodies to conserve heat. Um, so they've got brown fat stores that help them to get by through that time in life. Let's say just a little bit more about ketone bodies, just to fill in a little bit of information about them. So ketone bodies are something that get produced when lipolysis, so the breakdown of lipids, um, when that rate exceeds the rate at which we can use the fatty acids, okay, so we're breaking down lipids more quickly than we can utilize them, um, then in that case what happens is the liver will actually convert some of these fatty acid molecules into what are called ketone bodies. And there are a number of different examples of ketone bodies. Acetone would be one example of a ketone body. Uh, but ketone bodies are soluble. They end up circulating in the blood. And when they start to accumulate, this is something that can cause ketosis, which is a change in pH of the blood. And that can be a very serious condition. This is the thing that can be a concern if somebody is on a low carb or no carb diet. This is something that can potentially come up. Um, if a person is not consuming carbohydrates as part of their diet, then their body is kind of forced to burn fats, which is the whole point. The idea is to burn fat in this diet. But the, the danger zone is if the breakdown of fats is happening too quickly, then that can end up modifying the pH of the blood. It can make the blood become too acidic which is called ketosis, and that can lead to coma and death. So that's something that needs to be watched if somebody is, um, is trying to do a, a keto diet. 